All right, in this tutorial, uh, third part, sorry, we are going to be going over how to create just the character, just kind of tidying this up, maybe having some sound effects and so on. Um, we also may fix that little glitch at the side. It's not super important. Also, if you do want it kind of looking a bit more like the one I had, the reason it looked kind of a bit better than this one is it had a bit more detail and then the ambient occlusion just looked better and we didn't have the issue with those lines now one thing to note is actually we can easily fix that if we go ahead and grab all of these and change this to individual origins and just scale it up a tiny tiny little bit go back into edit mode please play uh, sorry into play mode by pressing p and it works good i think um you have those little lines. I believe that's with ambient occlusion. When you're baking the ambient occlusion, what you might want to do is just have a plane. Add a plane that's at the top of the bottom so you don't get that thing of the light showing up there. So the way I had that fixed is on my one I just had a bunch of boards and stuff so you couldn't really see that effect. But if you want to fix that, you just need like a, some kind of object which the ambient occlusion can bounce off. I believe just at the bottom of this, at the bottom of these and one at the top. And then you won't have that problem. So how I made the player is I went ahead and I got a new file. In this case, I'm going to send the same file. And I went ahead and went to GIMP. Or in your case, you could use Photoshop. I just prefer GIMP myself. And then we can say a height and a width of 400 by 400 or different one if you want. And what I went ahead and did is I just selected the area and I see this is going to be the face. Um, now you usually don't see the face on my character, um, so it doesn't really matter, I'm just going to go with this kind of colour, um, skin I guess, and I'm going to go ahead and do some more stuff. Alright, so I'm going to create a kind of a, a pretty, should be looking face, so these are going to be the eyes, um, actually, oh, just going to flip this around. Let's go this up and move this down. Boom. Boom. Scale this down a bit more. And flip that around. Boom. Boom. Alright, so now we have this. We can go ahead and kind of just get the, I don't know, some lips. I'm not very good at making lips for my character, but here we go. This is going to be the face. And the rest can just be kind of skin color or clothes or whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to say purple, maybe. I don't know why you'd want purple. Nah, actually, I don't like purple. I'm going to go with green. Um, maybe you want something for the we can go ahead and say um la, 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 la. notice color for something else and just got to kind of figure out what you want for your thing so maybe you just go ahead and click this main color and just paste it in here all right so these are three different colors in our face and everything and you might want one for each side of the head for like here and so on um it really depends what you're going for so you might want one for the back of the hair but in my case this should be fine so let's go export and i'm going to export to documents and this is going to be called um coal underscore save character um wait coal underscore player actually let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> now you could uh, i don't know you could have a Big thing set up for that if you like, but that should be fine. So let's go ahead to our third layer, which we're already in. Let's add a cube, and we're just going to make our play here. Now, it's probably be best to make it in another blend file, but in my case, I'm just going to do it in here. Should be fine. Um, you might want to actually do it in a different blend file. It is a very better way to do it. Um, so i just add another cube, and I'm just going to kind of make a cube looking thing. Kind of almost like a, a Minecraft character. Um... 
duplicate this across and let's go ahead and duplicate this down scale this out on the x and the y let's cross um, r in the middle r in the middle r in the middle all right so i'm just kind of getting some points where the body might bend so two loops there so that's control r and up on the scroll wheel if you didn't know let's go ahead and go shift s cursor to selection um shift a cube add that move it up uh so there we go there's our plan model let's go ahead and just join all of these to this and let's go ahead into edit mode uh yes and add a texture over here when we have this object selected um i hate specular so i'm going to turn that off you might want to leave that on depending on what you're doing but in this case i am just doing everything so let's go documents um uh, character uh col under character so that's color character name and we just go ahead and select it instead of this light map we can come here and we select that we can go u reset and we can go detection mode and we can go ahead and scale this down in this case i'm just going to make this shadeless so we can see everything's working um so let's go ahead and select this main body and say all of this and then we just go and remove the the these parts so there's going to be like the legs and so on and as you can see now i can go u reset and scale this down and go ahead and move this across so he'll be wearing know, green clothes um maybe yellow pants um and we'll put a face on the back of him or the front of him because that's going to be the back of his head so let's go ahead and move this scale this up um kind of to the face size we want yeah let's rotate that around all right so now we have a face there which you'll probably never see but anyway there is our player so what we can go ahead and do because to selection add a bone and it's going to be alt r um and then we can go ahead and connect this move this down i'm going to grab this and then we're going to go extrude make sure we have this end bit selected move this up let's go back into camera view and we can go ahead and duplicate this make sure we're not in individual origins and now we can go rotate uh, scale it down to kind of fit what we need just for each leg um, now i'm just doing this very short um you might want to do this better name everything uh but for tutorial's sake i'm kind of just going quite fast now let's go ahead and extrude this up um alt p clear parent for this bone oh make sure you have the whole bone selected alt p clear parent let's go select both of them control p keep offset so now this bone can be up here um but it's not connected just so everything works a little bit better we can grab these we can go control p keep offset control p keep offset basically keep offset means is it's not connected up to this bone but it is parented so if you move this bone these will move and then we can go ahead and grab these and say control p keep offset so now these ones are parented to this so if i move this main one the whole body moves but we can move each each individual one as you can see here we get this thing with arms moving, which is great. All right, so let's go ahead and select our mesh. So we want to go back to edit our object mode, select our mesh, then our, uh, what is it called? Um, a character, and we're going to call, we're going to go ahead and select, make sure this is selected last, control P, and we're going to go with automatic weights. Now you could actually set up weights in garbage. Um, in my case, looks all pretty fine and i am way too lazy in this tutorial to actually set up a big thing but it looks pretty fine with all the automatic weights being set up so now that that's done we can go ahead and kind of animate this now you could do an ambient occlusion map for this if you liked uh personally i did do one in the last one but it doesn't really make too much of a difference so it doesn't matter so what i've gone ahead and done is just gone into pose mode and i'm just rotating each bone 
So what the, what I'm doing here is this is going to be the position, the starting position it's always going to be in. So when the loop ends, it's always going to be in this position, and then it's going to go through, and it's going to end this position. So you can have a looping animation, but it doesn't really look like it's looping so much because it's not jumping. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go ahead and rotate this. Um, just kind of make like you play a loop. Your player look like they are falling. All right. Uh, so this dude's actually quite fat, and you might not want that. Um, so actually, I believe we can just fix that here by selecting the right one. So we're going to select this main mission. I just did that with hovering over and clicking L. So yeah. What you're seeing there, if we stop clicking the um, caps lock, is the player's a lot more thinner and it looks a lot nicer. So there we go, now the player's falling nicely. So uh, in a nice kind of starting position for falling. So let's go ahead and come to animation. And let's go to frame 30. And let's go and click I, rotation. Go back to start, I, rotation. So it's always the same from start to finish and then we can go ahead and kind of just double click R to rotate this uh, double click R now we can see it's rotating wherever we like it so it's kind of a free move so let's go ahead and rotate this like we are moving um, let's rotate that rotate that rotate that so here there we go so let's go apply rotation and let's go ahead and move that there, move that there, and just going to kind of get this to a good rotation. Um, just kind of moving these around until it looks good. So there we go. Alright, so then maybe it's a bit too much. Um, we might want to change this to 60 frames, could make it a bit slower. Go to the first frame and just scale it up to 60 frames up in here. And now you can see the players falling more. At, it's not the best. Um, you might want to make the movement a bit smaller. And also, I believe if we go ahead and select the, the first ones. So select this with B and then get it. And then go to the last one, B. Select those. Can't see the keyboard when I'm doing this. And we want to go ahead and click V and vector to uh yeah to vector i believe vector um no not vector we want to go to free no vector i do actually yeah i think vector um yeah i think it's i believe it's vector you don't need that but that works good all right so you can see our animation is working and it's looping and we have a main character now so we can go ahead and go back to game logic and we can go ahead and call this uh player underscore show or mesh or object or whatever you wanted to call it and we can call this um rig underscore player show and now what we can go ahead and do is come to our main scene and we can go ahead and in my case, I want to scale this down so it fits in this box. Now, scaling down the rig in object mode is not really going to affect anything. It should be pretty much fine. And we also want to grab this main object and change it from static to no collision because this is not going to be detecting anything. It's just going to be for showing. All right, so we can go ahead now and we should be able to parent this rig to the main object. And we can go ahead and make the main object invisible. So now what you'll see is if we go into camera mode, textured, and press play, we have the character here, uh, but it's not falling. It doesn't look like it's falling, and it shouldn't be shadeless. So let's go ahead and change this to shadeless off. And you can see now that ours not, it's not shadeless anymore. So we could we need to go to fix this up now. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and move this down so it fits the grid a bit better. Uh, maybe not actually. 
the scale's up just a little bit, so it's a bit out of the bounds, but it should be fine. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and play an animation. So if we were to go ahead and add it always, and add an action, connect this up, and we we'll select the uh, armature action, which is the one we had, we can go ahead and actually rename that over here if you want a different name. So you need to be in the action editor, and then we can say uh, um, something like that, play a show animation. We'll just leave it like that. We, as we see, it's here. We can easily select and find it. So you can give it a name you like. All right. So one more thing. I'm going to quickly go ahead and come back to animation. It's 60 frames long. So we're going to go 60 in here. So what you see now is the animation is playing and then it stops. Uh, so what you're going to go ahead and do is now is you've got to change this to loop in. So as long as this playing, it's going to loop. And if it stops, loop in, it's going to loop all the way to the end and then stop. But if you go loop stop, as soon as the output it here stops, it's going to stop the animation instantly. So it's actually up to you which one of these you want to use in this case. I'm just going to use loop in just to make everything better, but should be good. So now you can see we've got, it's not the best animation, it looks a bit ugly. I did spend a bit more time on the one in my game, but as you can see, we have everything working. And we also have the camera animation. So let's make the lighting a bit better. So I'm going to change this to a sun lamp and we don't need shadows on, I don't think. Let's duplicate a sun lamp, Alt R, Alt G, Z, G, Z, move this up. And let's go ahead and ch change this to a Hemi. And I'm going to go with quite a bright style here. So I'm going to leave that at full capacity. So as you can see, it's darker on the side, but you can see it's working. All right, so we can play the game again. Um... So there we go, we have it falling and everything's working. So let's uh, say we got everything working and we want the score to go to the second screen. How do we go about and do that? Um, now for now, you could just leave it like this and people could see the score there. But if you want to go into the second screen, we're going to get into a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Python. So... What we're going to go ahead and do is change this from the image editor to the text editor. And what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to create a new script. And this is going to be load, load underscore point, points. And also going to call it dot py to say it's a Python script. Now, from as far as I know, you do not need this .py, it's just a good practice to do. So this is just a name here, so you can just use this name. So you can just have it with .py, but I'm pretty sure it's a good practice to have it .py. I believe this is what you're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and write a script. So I'm going to go ahead and do import bge. So what we're going ahead and doing here is by importing bge is we're saying allow us access to all of the basically all of the things that we can do in python with the blender game engine so it allows us to talk to allows python to tell the blender game engine stuff that our script is telling the blender game engine to do so you're gonna need this on all your scripts or else nothing's gonna work so how do we figure out how we what we can write here well we can go ahead and come to the help um Python API reference, and that will take open up a link in a web browser. All right, so now we have this showing up. So you see, oh man, this is scary. So scroll down until you see game engine modules. Now come down to game logic, uh, game logic. So there, then you go bg.gamelogic. And straight away you see all this boring stuff, so don't worry about this. What we're looking for is this bg.global uh, dictionary. That's what this stands for. So what we can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and copy this, or you can go ahead and write it down in the script. Um, basically what this is going to allow us to do is we can say um, gd, which is game directory. So what, what we're doing is basically storing this piece of code in this, this little word here. 
So that's what we're doing in this code. So we are storing it in, storing this whole thing in this piece of code. So instead of writing this out, we can just refer to this using this GD. All right now, we, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and go to our other scene, which contains our score. Um, so that's the one we need to worry about. So let's come over to our overlay, I believe it is. And we're going to add our Python script to this. So let's say when we get message, when we get a message from this points, let's say die, when we get the message die, so we know it's died, we're going to run this script. So what the script is going to do is it's going to run this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say GD, um, no, 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 no. yes, GD, and then we're going to do these symbols right here. So you want to put a couple of these square brackets, I believe it is. Um, so this is basically saying, referring to this, and it's the same as doing this, I believe. And what we're saying is we want to go further into this, and we want to do some stuff. So in this case, I'm not going to be the best explainer, so I'm just going to kind of show what we do. So let's say we're going to put two air brackets in here, and this is to find that we're writing like a, a word, not a, a storage device like this is. And we're going to say we're going to store this in point. And what this allows us to do is even if we switch scenes, we're going to be able to get back to this. So this is the same, basically the same as referring to this, except um, this is like a, its own, how do I explain this? This is, uh, basically it holds information across Blender, so you can go to a different scene and it's still going to have that information in there, which is really useful. So basically what we're doing is we are referring to this information holder, to this piece of script, and we're saying we're going to create another one of these, basically, and it's going to be called points, so that's how we refer to it. And we're going to store something in it. So what we can go ahead and do is we can actually go ahead and also come up here. And we're going to go ahead and create a new Python script. And this is going to be game logic simple. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get you to grab these two pieces of code. So just click and drag across them and go control C. And then we can delete this. And we're going to go control C. Right, so what this is doing here is it's getting when it says cont equals bg dot get current controller, it's basically saying get this controller here. So this is what it's referring to because it has a script on it. And owner dot equals cont dot owner, it's basically saying what's the owner of this object. And the reason we need this is we want to be able to say um, owner own, and then we want to go ahead and say oh. Uh, point uh, the game directory and then the storage we are putting it in points is going to be equal to the text object here so by default this has a name you can't change because it's not a text object so it's text so we can go ahead and see it's a capital T and then the rest is just normal so we can say in air quotes we can say text because we're referring to this which is a string so we have to refer to it as a string because we have not defined any thing up here to store it so we can't just write it as normal text anyway what you see now is when we die you're not going to see much so this script is basically fully functioning um if it's not working for you you've probably done something a little bit wrong or i am incorrect but to test this out we kind of have to continue doing some other stuff so of course actually what we can go ahead and do is we can go print and then we can go to um, parentheses and we can say go ahead and copy this and it's going to print out it's going to print this points property that we've assigned to this game logic uh, to this bg.gamelogic so we can read now using this because we also refer to this, we can read that what points has in it, what data it has, and we already assigned text to GDE dot points. So now, what you should see is if we go ahead and go back to our 
scene and select our player and when we die uh, I believe it does send a message so when properties life is equal to zero we're going to send a message so let's add another message and this is this one right here I believe so yep when it's equal to zero we're also going to send a message so that's why we connected it up and dragged it to here and this is going to be uh, die all right so we can go ahead and play this and we can go ahead and hit something and then hit something else and then let's hit this all right so we died now what we can go ahead and do now is go ahead and go exit the game come here and go toggle system console and you can see it printed the score in the console right here uh, now one thing to note is if you have anything wrong um, it may be because you typed one of these wrongs or this is not capital or this text is not the same as the one here um, make, just make sure you have all of this the same if you have any questions about this just post a script in the comments and I should be able to tell you how to fix it alright so now that it's done we want to load it in our other scene so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make a copy of the script basically so we're going to come back to our uh, uh, scene here let's go to where is it uh, die I believe let's add a score text and this is going to be our score and this is going to be a text property add on to this and this is going to be an integer and this is going to be equal to zero by default zero we press play it's equal to zero and what we're going to go ahead and do is copy this and then I'm going to go and also rename this to save point underscore points uh, it should fix up that thing in the other scene so what we can go ahead and do is copy this code and then we can go ahead and exit this I believe or no we don't want to exit this because I'm pretty sure it'll delete it so we want to go ahead and create new and we want to go ahead and paste this in so that new this little button here create new text block this will we'll go ahead and do and we can call this load and then underscore points um points right. all right so now that we've done that we can also go dot py if we like dot py what we can go ahead and do here is we can basically flip this around so we can say that um, our text here so this this little piece of text here is this is referring to this here is it's going to be equal to the points uh, storage that we set it to in the other scene so what you see here is actually we can delete this because this should just work by default what we should be able to do is go back to our scene and press play now we have fall and we can hit all of these and let's get a bit more points and die um, so this is not working why is this not working let's go ahead to our scene um, all right let's go back to die Ah, so we didn't actually run this this piece of code so what we're going to do is when we get the message uh, die we're going to go ahead and run no sorry when it's always we're going to add always and we're going to go ahead and just run this code by default so what you should see is if we get this load and we press play we should go back to our other thing and to a console and we should have got an error so no uh, points did not exist so the reason for that is it is created in the other script so what you got what we need to do is just if we start from the scene it's gonna by default not work so we should be able to go back to our normal scene press play and if we hit this and we hit this um, what you see is when we die it's not working Alright, so I figured out the problem, and the problem is not with our script, 
it's the problem is this updates too late so basically the problem is when we run this script there is nothing to load because we haven't saved anything because this is run too late now i'm just going to quick quickly 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 um test this i don't think it's going to make a difference but if we click this <coughs> just going to run it first um so if we go back to scene uh i don't think it's going to make a difference but might as well try so let's go ahead and hit these and no it doesn't work so the way we do this is it's a bit different to the way i did it but this works fine what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and come to our overlay yes and instead of using a message we can go ahead and update it every time we get a new point now this is not necessarily the best method but it's not going to take too much processing power up uh, there is a lot better methods and it's probably not the best saving every single take but it's not going to take up much that much extra power i don't think um so what does this message do so everything should be fine here actually so we can go ahead and also do it when the coin gets collected so we'll update it when the coin gets collected and what you should see now is that the load and save script should work perfectly fine so if we play our game from the start we can fall down and as you can see it shows our points here you might want to say in the uh, die scene you might want to move this across kind of sadly blend once center up but you can say points here so you can say points and you also want to change this to a string so that shows up correctly and we could say yep there's our points um maybe above so it looks a bit better uh, but you would set this up a bit nicer but there we go that is the last thing if you want to add sound effects what you can go ahead and do as I might have explained this in a later one but on any of these you just want to go ahead and add a sound 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 and we want to go ahead and connect this up and I'm going to go ahead and get a sound from my game that oh, I did actually make all the sounds myself so let's go ahead and come back here open and I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and let's get player hit so I don't know what I actually connect this up to so let's find the one where we collide so hit um, so say hit here do 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 what am I doing yep so when we hit something I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up and we're gonna play end oh. so now oh. you can see it's playing the sound and it works fine for us and the reason this is messed up is because that we duplicated the object and it still had the script so you can easily fix that by removing that but there you go that's how you play a sound now if you play a lot I believe uh, let's say if we hold this down and connect this up instead so let's remove this top one what you see is space see we get this problem when we click it a lot so what you can go ahead and do is in this case it doesn't work it works fine but what you could go ahead and do is you could say um let's go ahead and come to this other scene just for example we could add a ch 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 empty and you could add a always and then a sound and then we could go ahead and plug this in select our player hit sound and we could go ahead and add delay and then we could figure out the length before the sound is over then we could go and then we could come here and we could say end object so let's go ahead and click that end object and you just add this in wherever you have the sound and then you'll have overlapping sounds you want to just have it restarting which can be really really annoying and this doesn't work as well and yeah the sound will be 3d and it'll stay in the place even though you move around or something um also if you want to have music in the background what you can go ahead and do is just have an empty sitting not one that you've added 
uh, just one that just sits in the scene and you can just have a loop um, any one of these I don't really to differ actually just loop end should work and as long as it's active it's just always going to be playing it so it's always going to be active so it's always going to be playing sound and you can have music in your game uh, but there is the pretty much the basics, uh, there we go, there is the game working and fine, I don't have that sound anymore but you have the points saved, you have everything working and here you have your basic game. So there we go, um, if you want to see more tutorials this and tutorials on other subjects I do usually do a lot of quicker tutorials but to what you think of the longer tutorials I believe this is probably like three hours long now which is pretty insane but if you like tutorials like this, please comment down below if you have ideas for upcoming tutorials that you're still watching at this point. Also comment them down below. But have a great week, keep lendering, and make something cool.